For your hand-constructed project, you will create a cylinder vase that is 10 to 12 inches tall, wet, in the unfired stage, 10 to 12 inches. Surface decoration is an important part of the project. Equal time should be given to the construction and decoration of your project. You will post an image of this project on Canvas under the Hand Constructed Project tab. Before you begin, take a look at the PDF that has some additional instructions and some images that will hopefully inspire you. Go on Pinterest, search the web, find some images of bases that you like and print those out or have them have the images uh, so that you can view them on your computer. Here I just have some printed out. I just like that shape. I like some of the surface decoration. I want to do some scraffito. Maybe you took some slip home and you can do scraffito. If not, there are other ways that you can decorate your piece. I did a sketch here. So I liked the shape of this vase, but I wanted something a little more untraditional with the multiple necks on it. So I know what I want to do. I know about how tall I'm aiming for. It's good to think about you know, how wide compared to how tall your piece is. Well, if I'm just thinking about the body here, it is just about as tall as it is wide. It's kind of a circle in just the body there. And then these necks kind of come out of there. So if this is going to be 11 inches, it's going to be 11 inches there. That means the bottom is probably going to be about that big. So consider that as you're working as you begin, you're determining the size of the bottom of your piece, and the bottom of your piece will determine how big, how tall it is, if your piece is in proportion to your drawing. One way that I can control that is by creating a base for my piece that I build it in, sort of an armature that will contain the walls of your piece so that it doesn't get too big. A wire tool is good for cutting the clay if you don't have that your knife will work just fine and I'm gonna start with a good sized chunk that will be my armature always want to close up your bag of clay when you're not using it so it doesn't dry out and I usually twist that and then I'll turn it upside down that way so I got my clay here and I can kind of squish it roll it in my hands I can roll it on the table I want a nice even shape. And I decided my base was going to be about that big, somewhere in there. And this is going to support that, right? So I need to make this just a little bit bigger than how I want my bottom to be. So get that as even as you can without kind of obsessing on it. Just get it in the ballpark. We may as well get some slips started. So I'm going to get my container, plastic container here, and I can just break up some little chunks of clay into that container. And then get some water, a little bit of water in there, and then just start mashing it up. Maybe that's a little bit long. I think this is about how I want it to be. Right about there, so I can cut it straight down all the way through. Remove this end, remove this end. Now it lines up just right. Score it. Add a little bit of slip. You don't want to add too much slip at this stage because it can get really moist. And it's already moist. And you want it to kind of hold its form. So now that I have this shape, I want to clean it up a little bit and make it pretty symmetrical because that's going to support my sculpture. That's good enough. That's pretty round. 
and my base will kind of come up here because if I don't have this support here then as I'm building my vase it'll start to sit down on the sides and get wider and wider and wider and before you know it it's gonna be this wide instead of this wide how you started it this keeps it from squishing outward I'm gonna have a little piece of paper in there that I can use to keep the clay from sticking to itself not absolutely necessary but that helps to keep this clay from sticking to the clay that you're going to put inside of it and if you have a board that's good if you have like a book or something you can set it on that's good because you're going to want to kind of rotate it as you're working and this will allow you to rotate it if you have a banding wheel lazy susan something like that that's ideal but this is fine and I'm gonna start with a pinch pot. If your piece is really flat on the bottom, you might start with more of a slab. Any part that sticks out, I'm gonna whack it until I get it into a nice ball shape. The goal is to get a really nice ball. Any spots that have kind of creases and stuff in them, I'm gonna smooth those out. Then I'll stick my thumb in there, going straight down, straight down like I'm going straight through the ball of clay and I'm gonna do little pinches and rotate. Pinch and rotate, pinch and rotate. And I wanna get this down to about a half inch in thickness. Once I can get two thumbs in there, I'll do that. Make sure not to pinch too hard. Better to take your time and go slow and avoid getting uneven spots. And you can add clay and kind of patch it up if you need to, but it's better to just do it once and do it right than have to fiddle with it too much. Down here, it's always going to be thicker unless you got super long thumbs. So you got to thin out that bottom part, and you do that by pushing against your palm and rotating. And you're aiming for a certain shape, right? It's the bottom of the vase. It's going to fit in there. It's going to be that wide. So it's got to open up a little bit more. So it's kind of a balance, you know, when it's thin, it feels light and elegant, but if it's thicker, it's going to be stronger. All right, that's good. Put that in there. It's nice when it goes all the way down to the bottom. You know what? That could, this could get just a little bit bigger. This could get a little, little bitty bit bigger. You always want to rotate as you're working. If you're keeping your sculpture it's symmetrical, there we go. That's a little better. paper in there. It's nicely in there. Now it's getting down. Yeah, now it's touching the bottom, so that's good. The next thing I want to do is start rolling out some coils. And I'm going to cut off some chunks of clay that are about the size of a fist, a little bigger than a fist. Some people like thicker coils. Some people like thinner coils. The advantage to a thinner coil is maybe you're building it a little more carefully, a little more incrementally, maybe more likely to get even walls. The advantage to a thicker coil is you're getting more done at once, you're covering more area. So you want to make sure that your coil is long enough to go all the way around your pot. And it is good. You do want to focus on making them as evenly as you can without, you know, fussing on them too much. So with your coils, if you are adding them really, you know, on the outside of your shape, you're going to be building out. If you add them right on top, then you're going up. If you go on the inside, then you're going to go in. And right now I kind of just want to go up. 
So I'm going to stack it right on top and do my little cutting trick. Cut through, score. And I got my slip already on my fork here. Don't need to get it too sloppy here because I don't want it to become wet and soft and weak. So I don't need a lot of slip, but good to score more than you think you need. Do lots of scoring. And then plop it on there. And make sure that's sticking together. You know what? I'm going to have to kind of lift it up a little bit just so I can get my fingers in here. And smush that down. Smush that down. Really smush it together. It doesn't matter really if you go up or down. Get on the inside. I like to use my knuckle in there. Smooth it. Wooden rib can work really well for this. Really working that outside to compress it together. Thinning out those walls. So I can kind of pinch it and rotate, thinning out the walls as I'm going up. Don't go too thin. Just about a half inch is what I'm going for. Now if you get really good at this, you could go a little thinner, but we need to have some structure. We need it thick enough to have a little structure to it. Making sure those walls are nice and even. Think about the anatomy of a vase. Vases usually have a foot, maybe they have some kind of waist or maybe more of a belly depending on that shape, whether it goes in or out. They're going to have a shoulder, they're going to have a neck, and a lip. Are you incorporating all those parts together in your vase? Maybe yours is straighter and it doesn't have as much of a shoulder. Uh, maybe it just has a neck and a lip. But consider those components. Which parts match? Does the lip match the foot in any way? It's nice when they do because then it has sort of a beginning and an end and they relate to each other. It kind of gives it a sense of completion. And also it's important to have a nice lip. You want to have a good looking lip the lip is going to talk about the vase. It's going to say, if it's a nice looking lip, it's going to say, I'm a beautiful vase. I'm light and elegant and graceful. Or if it's messy and thick, it's going to say, I'm a sloppy vase. I am heavy and misshapen and poorly built. But even if your vase is heavy uh, and not built that well, if it has a nice lip, it's going to look as if it's built well. We're going to continue to build upward. Maybe it's going to start coming in a little bit, but I'm going for sort of a ball shape. Yeah, I'll probably come in ever so slightly here. Score well. Score more than you think you need. my knuckle on the inside. Let's pull it out and look at that shape. So if I look at how wide it is compared to how tall. Oh wow, I really want to start bringing it in. I should have brought it in a little bit already. So I'm going to start rounding that out. That's the tendency. It always wants to get big. And be careful, look, if I set it down, it's just going to start squishing. It's going to want to squish and open up. So be careful setting it down. Generally, if you set it down, you want to do it like that. Set it on the lip and keep this from getting too flat. 
I'll flatten it out eventually, but I want to avoid flattening it out too much. While I've got it out here, maybe I'll start to smooth it out a little bit more. A little more shaping, a little more making it a clean, symmetrical shape here. Somehow one side already got taller, but that's fine. We'll fix that. Your metal rib is going to be really good for this type of smoothing. I could even do some shaping with a paddle or a book at this stage if I needed to. So, got a little taller than we wanted. We want to start bringing it in. Here's a little trick to help solve that. I'm going to mark both sides straight across. And then I'm going to cut a dart. I just kind of went for it, but you might want to measure it a little bit first. And I'll score that with a little bit of slip. And then I'll do my same V over here. See how much it brought it in. Now the best thing to do with a seam like that, it's going to want to kind of come apart and you can, you can compress it right there, compress the seam and then using some of the clay that you just cut out of there because it's going to be the same moisture level. Score it, score it, little slip on there and add it right back in there. And if you get cracks later on, that's how you can fix a crack. Like before it's bone dry, certainly. If it's in the leather hard stage and you get a crack, you can do the same thing. Add it right on there. So you're compressing it. The clay is made of tiny little particles. And when you squish those particles, they become closer together, they become denser and stronger. thin out these walls a little bit. And I'm going to get a little bit thinner just to keep the weight nice. And I'm getting close to actually being able to close this up. So I want to address the inside a little bit. I can use this rib. I like this rib better so I can get in there easier. And just kind of smooth it out. Even if people can't completely see what's going on in there, you want it to look nice in there. So I went round on my shape. You don't have to go so round. Maybe you want more of a cylinder. In that case, you'd build straight up. It can be a good idea to take a break from it and let it stiffen up a little bit so it can hold its weight because the more weight you start adding up here the more it's gonna put pressure on your piece and make it want to kind of squish down maybe I'm only gonna leave it for a couple hours while I do something else you can put plastic just around the lip and that can keep the lip from getting too dry but you can let the rest of it kind of stiffen up. Down here, with the kind of clay on clay, it's gonna, it's not gonna dry out all that much, and you do want it to dry out down there, so maybe you get some more paper, because the paper is gonna absorb moisture. Maybe you put a bunch of paper in there.
There we go. Now the paper is going to help soak up some of that moisture. This plastic will keep it from drying out at the lip. I don't want to leave it like that for more than a few hours because it could easily get too dry. So if you're done working on it for the day, then you'll want to take some plastic and wrap the whole thing up. I left it loosely covered for about 18 hours or so. Air could still kind of get in underneath the plastic and I left the rim wrapped up so it would stay nice and moist and it stiffened up a little bit. Ideally it would have stiffened up a little bit more. So I'm going to keep building upward and looking at the shape that I'm kind of going for. I'll, I cut those darts in. I'm going to bring it in and close it off. So I'm going to keep rolling out some coils, add a coil on there, bring it in tighter. Get my fork with a little slip on it. Always score around the edges. And now that things are a little stiffer, I'm going to use a little bit more slip. Take out a little bit more. This time you notice that coil is really going on the inside, the inside, because I want to build it inward. closing off the inside now and I spent some time in the last session smoothing that inside really well and that's good you always want to address the inside even if the viewer is not totally going to see in there whoever uses this vessel it's not going to see all the way in there it'll function better it'll have more integrity if the inside is properly addressed Now before I close it off all the way, I want to make sure that I don't need to get in there and do more shaping. Always a really good idea to step back from your piece and get a good look at it. So what I like about this vase is it really kind of gracefully comes out and has a real roundedness to it. Mine's kind of like that, but could be a little more symmetrical definitely needs to come in more on the top. Now that it is a little bit stiffer, I'm going to set it on its bottom because it needs to get kind of a flat spot, but I'm just going to be careful not to let it get too flat. I need to keep kind of monitoring how much it's sagging into the table because it is going to do that just a little bit at least. One thing I could do is do some paddling on the bottom. Looks like it's bulging out more this side than this side. Maybe I'll get inside of it and 
use my rib a little bit. It's not always good to make a mess, but I have some dry chunks here. And just by putting them underneath where my board is, that's going to help it rotate. Rotate. Got a little bit of a dent there for my armature, so I want to make sure not to leave that. And before I close this thing off, I just want to make sure that I don't need to get in there and use my rib anymore. It's okay to add a little tiny bit of clay without scoring, but definitely want to be careful when you're adding clay. Because if you put, especially if you put wet clay on some clay that's already dried out quite a bit, then it's not going to stick very well. It'll look like it's going to stick, but they're going to shrink at different rates, and that clay that you added might crack off or even trap some air in there and explode off in the kiln. Clean up the bottom a little bit. So I want this intentionally off-center a little bit with the neck coming out over here and then some smaller necks there. Yeah, so right there. So and then I can score this. Add some clay. It's good to have a little bit of clay sitting out while you're working. Not your whole bag, but just a little bit.